totally different one today. We got the Gen Mitsu handheld Galvo laser machine. This is supposed to be five and a half watts. I have never played with a Galvo laser before. I think this should be fun. Pretty small little box. Oh, this is a lump of hardware. That is heavy. Let's get everything out. Out of the box and plugged in, this thing has got a quite loud fan, but <laughs> I kind of expected that with the lump of metal that it is. So the bottom here, we have a pad that we can engrave on, but also if you flip it over, there's a cutting pad, which is kind of neat with these raised uh, pyramids. Kind of a neat idea. On the top, the controls are super simple. Uh, I just took a pass through the manual. There's no videos out there yet. So uh, the things are super straightforward. If you hold the button, the uh, laser head raises. If you hold it again, it goes down. And then if we just tap it, it should autofocus. And you can actually see that down here as the point gets really pointy. <laughs> and right at the zero mark, so kind of expected that. It unfolded super simple, nothing to it. I, I'm surprised it actually is motorized. On the back side, it has USB input from the PC as well as a USB-A, and that's for a rotary attachment I don't have to show you. Accessories, pretty simple stuff. USB stick with the software, some cards to engrave on, a brush. This marker is noted in the instructions where you can actually uh, put it on metal and then uh, engrave and then wipe off the excess. So basically it looks like it's just a dry erase marker. Standard 400-ish nanometer goggles, glasses, uh, questionable origin, but I suspect they're sufficient. Nothing else to this. You line the lines up at the top when you unfold it and that's it. You're done. So there's very little information out, out there for this laser and I accepted it just to have a look. I was kind of surprised at the price point afterwards after I had accepted it. This is a top of the mark price point currently. Uh, you can check it out at the link below, but uh, I think it has a pretty interesting use case. I'm not sure that this will be marketed towards crafters. I think, oh, well, let's play with it. Let's get it out and give it a go. Okay, out in the shop, I've been playing with this a little bit. And uh, number one piece of advice, you've got to wear these. This thing has no shielding whatsoever and the glare is insane off of everything. Uh, there's no hiding from it. It's just like you were arc welding with nothing around. I won't use the word dangerous, but you should be really, really careful with it. Some other things, uh, looking through the manual, they do mention inaccurate focus. Read the focus section. Uh, there is no focus section. It's pretty straightforward though. You can tell when it's focused by the size of the dot, but they never did flesh that part out in the manual. So don't go looking for it, or maybe you can find it and I can't. Otherwise, the manual is pretty good. It covers most things. It makes it so that you can get started with this. What's not good? is the app. Uh, fit and finish of the app looks good, but when you go to, let's say, a material is actually the designs, and you can crop, you can erase it, or you can go to the next step. Uh, contrast, you can set, this is pretty good. Everything is pretty reasonable here, but when you go to the next step, you can do a cool outline. And that is the framing and it works really well. The problem is, is when we go to engrave this, if we have a problem, we can't go back. So if we go, let me get my safety glasses on. We can set the laser power. It's set to cork here. That's actually pretty reasonable. And we hit uh, start carving. You can actually change the cork to cork 10 watt or bamboo 
Uh, laser power doesn't seem to change much, but if you go to this Quark 10W, it actually drops the power so low that it won't even engrave. So I'm not entirely sure why that is. If you leave it on Quark, you can just set it to whatever. This is fine. One pass, full power, start. And that actually is a perfect example. For some reason, we kind of failed there. It's not engraved hardly at all. I'm not sure whether it's a focus problem or not. So I'm going to hit, actually, before we do that, if we go back, we can't restart. You have to start all the way over from the beginning. There's no way to just do another pass. That makes the app really kind of unusable. You really need to be able to just pick up where you left off to just do another pass before you move your material. I'm not entirely sure why that is. So if we frame again, our framing should not have changed. So let's do three passes, start. As you can see, this makes a heck of a pile of smoke in here. That's not such a good result. You might be like me in the beginning where I didn't have any of these laser cutters and fancy equipment. And maybe you just want to build up some projects and sell them to raise some money to buy these. That's what I did. Store.makeme.org. Check out PCB Way. They can do laser cutting and fabrication for you. All different PCB services, CNC machining, laser engraving, and much more. If you just have a small project or want to get started in production, check them out. Ask for a quote. They supported this channel for years, and I'm quite glad to have them. Okay, we'll hit start carving. Make sure you've got your shades on. And away it goes, and it makes one heck of a pile of smoke. But we could have got away with one pass there. We'll let it go the full three. Nothing through to the back side. Nice clear engrave. Looks fine. They really need to make it so that you can do another pass. Uh, it won't allow me to save, and when it did allow me to save, it still just dumped me out to the main menu. Oh, there's no way to go back, which is not good. But otherwise, it works just fine. You can do a little graffiti, go next step, frame it, Hit next step. And this is how fast you can be working with this. Um, carving speed 100%, one pass, start. Shades on. Just like that, we're done. We hit save, failed to save again. So we can't go back, say we wanted to do another pass. We hit back, it's gone. There's no way to go back. So they really need to fix that. Pretty cool for doing small stuff, but uh, I think its strength lies elsewhere. I don't think the real value of that is in just 
doing small crafts on a bench because any old laser can do that. But what this laser can do is pretty much entirely portable. So let's say we had, we wanted to laser markings on the inside of a building structure, like lumber that had been inspected or something. And you wanted a little bit more permanent than say just pencil marks or whatever. I think we could maybe use this in that kind of a situation. We'll do the same as before, full power. Let's go a little less carving. Ah, I'll just leave the carving speed high for the sake of demonstration. But what we want is let's try simulating on a building. Start carving. And let's see how this works. Well, there we go. That works perfectly fine. That is etched right into the lumber. I bet you that's not a use case that they thought of. I'm trying to come up with things in my head. What, what can we do with this that we can't do with an existing laser on the bench? And this being completely portable and shoot through, this will work on any size of material. I find that very interesting. How about metal? Now the focus should be the exact same as last time. We shouldn't need to refocus it because the distance is the same. Let's use the same settings. Let's go frame. I'm gonna maybe do this up here. Nah, let's do it where you can see it. Next step, carving speed. I'm going to lower the carving speed just a little bit here. We're going to hit go. Let's see what it does. Never tried this until now. Lovely. How do we do? Sure smells like it did something. And that definitely engraved, removed the paint right off. That worked wonderful. That's actually, that's actually pretty neat. So we could do something up to the full size of this area here, which is pretty cool. I think that would be pretty handy with large metal things like Equipment. Say you wanted to laser your serial number or perhaps anti-theft ID or information. Uh, you can engrave that right in. Now, obviously you can remove this by grinding that off, but it would be blatantly obvious that it's been removed. So I think this could be used on equipment tagging too. I, like, I, like I mentioned earlier, I don't think this is well suited for the craft market. I think this thing has larger uses. Let's try something a little different. Let's try engraving some text. This is a, a, a battery charger, uh, just for my camcorder and light batteries and stuff. And we'll hit frame again. Let's see what it does. Definitely do this with some ventilation. Uh, probably a pretty bad idea to do this on plastic without ventilation. We'll hit go. Not sure whether the camera picks up the glare, but holy smokes is there a pile. I mean, that is a lot of caustic smoke. With the end result, that is well and truly engraved right into the plastic. Don't do this without ventilation. Do not do what I just did. This is just for the sake of testing. And it worked wonderful. The hazards are without ventilation, you could get yourself into trouble. These things, keep them on your head. That is a lot of glare. The benefits, you've got a Galvo laser that you can move anywhere.
and engrave on virtually anything at any angle as long as you can fit this height of a unit. Pretty neat. I'm going to test this out some more and we'll come back in a future video and see how it does. But uh, as a first try, pretty neat. We'll see uh, We'll see how this goes. I hope you like this video, guys. I hope you maybe get some ideas out of this and we'll see you guys next video.